Welcome to the Sovereign Goddess Podcast, authentic soul sessions with modern medicine women and goddess penures alike to empower and support the Sovereign Goddess as she builds her queendom with grace. We are gathered here to support you as you embark on the journey to honor all facets of the human experience. It's my great pleasure to be with you today. I'm your host, Sabrina Riccio, Solistic Alchemist and Visionary behind Shamanessa Gadessa. As we embark on this vulnerable and authentic spiritual journey together, we are gathered here to recognize our divinity and radiate our truth. We are here to be the light we wish to see in the world. I invite you to relax, grab a cup of tea, clear the air and say a prayer with some plant medicines, and join us in our sacred ceremony. Deep bow, sister, for embarking on this beautiful journey with us. Now let's get started and allow the miracles to unfold. Hello, beautiful. Welcome to another episode of the Sovereign Goddess Podcast. Authentic conversations with goddess penures and medicine women alike, inspiring you to help you build your queendom with grace. I'm your host, Sabrina Riccio, and whew, happy full moon vibes. I mean, this Virgo full moon has been a really potent one. We're in this daylight savings time. We're in this Venus retrograde, and uh, it's extremely potent time for me because one, my moon is in Virgo. Two, um, I was born on a Friday, which means I have a lot of Venus energy and that love. And three, I'm in the middle of a gallstone flush as we speak. I'm literally on my third, this is my third time doing this flush. Back in May, I was hospitalized uh, for gallstones, and I've already passed 250 for my other two rounds, and it just so happened that, you know, I'm timing this so that it's coming out, like, right before the spring, uh, spring equinox, and right on this Virgo full moon. So I've had a lot of clarity, and this Venus retrograde... It's hilarious right now. Like, there's no such thing as coincidence. And I really want you to know that. But this Venus retrograde is really asking us to dive in deep. And where can you love yourself? It's going, like, really deep down into our soul. And the interesting thing about this retrograde, it's going to be talking... I'm going to talk a little bit about... Actually, not a little bit about it, but that's what this episode is going to be a lot about. Um... So the, this Venus retrograde ends on April 15th, and oddly enough, it's a um, 10-year anniversary since, like, one of my best friends um, suddenly passed, taking her own life, and five years since a really difficult LSD experience that I had, and I really wanted to get on board and talk more, like, very vulnerably I think last episode was pretty vulnerable of me and that really just opened up the doors for me to continue with this like path of vulnerability and um, I really wanted to be honest and I really want to step into my truth right now because that's what a lot of this full moon is talking about it's a lot of what this uh, Venus retrograde is talking about it's about being in alignment with who you really are and what's really interesting is that I, I've known this quote for a while, but like I came across it again and it's just been like permeating in my being since it, since I was able to see it. And it says, it's a quote from Yogi Bhajan, who's, you know, the, the teacher of who brought Kundalini Yoga to the West. And essentially the quote was about creation is ready. Creator is ready to serve you if you just allow yourself to be you. And so you know, for so long, like I said, I'm on this like five year mark since a really difficult um, LSD experience that I had. And from that, like I had a lot of I experienced so many different illnesses, uh, mental illnesses. And uh, that mental Ill- those mental illnesses that I experienced, you know, was a lot of PTSD, paranoia, Um, like I had some like schizophrenic episodes, um, anxiety, psychosis, like all of the crazy, like mental illnesses that 
allow us to just we're just in our heads the whole time or we're really depressed and all these things and I'm the first to say like kundalini yoga really helped save my life but for me to find kundalini yoga essentially is because I found it after a difficult LSD experience and so you know I'm really working on becoming more clear on who I am and what I believe in and what is my sat nam, what is my truth. And I may get some backlash from the yoga community, but that is not just, that's not my only community. I'm also in a community with a lot of conscious psychonauts who love to explore the depths of their minds and their souls and, you know, other uh, dimensions. And for me to say this, you know, I had so much shame for a long time. I carried a lot of shame for a long time. And but the truth is, is that psychedelic saved my life. And again, it may not be very approved in the yoga community, but this is my journey. And I really at this point right now where I'm working on healing stigmas myself in my own life and to stop like being ashamed of my past and my journey, because where I've been it has led me to this point right now. And so, you know, when I I wanted to talk a little bit about what happened during uh, my psychedelic experience and um, how it really drove me to the person I am today. And my in my heart, I would love to just be bridging that gap between the yoga community, the spiritual community in a way. And, you know, this entheogenic, psychonaut community because I can't, I choose to no longer deny that I'm really an ally to both. And, you know, when I was at Envision, I was talking with this woman named Jade, and she runs MAPS, which is the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies. And I shared with her that, you know, like two of the sprays of Shamanic Dream, you know, my, um, my smudgely, my smudgeless, my, uh, excuse me, my smokeless smudge spray, um, two of them, two of the different ones, Grounded and Intuitive, Grounded is uh, donated to the Zendo Project, and what the Zendo Project does, they create safe spaces at festivals and help promote education for psychedelic harm reduction. And MAPS is a multidisciplinary association of psychedelic studies. And what MAPS is doing is that they're working with a lot of scientists and doctors and psychiatrists, essentially to help bring awareness and to help use psychedelics as an aid in therapeutic sessions. So right now, like uh, MDMA, which would be known as like Molly for some people, they're on the third phase right now in order to be approved by the FDA to help with PTSD. And in all reality, it helped me with my depression And my PTSD, when I first found it back in 2011, my problem was, was that I was abusing it to the point where when I was doing Peace Love EDM, I was just going to clubs every weekend and I didn't like being drunk. And so it was also cheaper just to take a Molly. But the thing was, I was abusing it and not using it in ceremony in terms of a way of how can this best serve me rather than like, how can I use this recreationally? And what's interesting is that I'm hearing a lot of the community, the yoga community right now, the hot topic right now is either marijuana or microdosing. Um, And, you know, I I understand that a lot of people, if you like, I'm at this point right now where it's like, you don't, until you've experienced it, you can't, you can't like, talk shit about it um and that's with a lot of things like with me like I know I've never like done cocaine and I've never done ketamine for instance and if we're talking about certain um drugs or medicines 
I've neither, I've I've done neither. So it would be a naive for me to really talk about them. I mean, I've seen friends like in very difficult, you know, cocaine addictions and um, ketamine like holes, K holes as they call it, where they're just like completely like tranquilized and paralyzed. And so ketamine is just like this tranquilizer. And it's a downer, and it's just, like, it hurts my heart when I see people that I love just, like, standing there. But something, I am a huge advocate for psilocybin mushrooms. um, And I do believe there's healing properties to cannabis, and I do believe there's healing properties to MDMA. How do I, and LSD. How do I know that? It's because I've personally had the experience. And so, you know, even as a kundalini yogi, The whole thing about kundalini yoga is that, like, it's all about the experience. And so it's interesting because I know, like, Yogi Bhajan wasn't a big fan of it and, you know, talked a lot about it. But the thing about me is that I've never been someone to just follow one set of rules. And now I'm, like, really seeing myself as this, like, kundalini rebel. And uh, I'm getting my groove back because I've always been a little more rebellious because I've kind of like paved my own road, you know, as a trailblazer. And I, I've i never been really a follower. What I do is like, I like to take bits and pieces of things and see how it can best, what, like what, take what you need and leave the rest essentially. And, um, you know, I love Kundalini yoga. I'm, I love to teach it. I love to share the science behind it. I love to chant mantra. I do my sadhana every day. Um, it is my yoga. Like when I found Kundalini yoga, I was like, wow, this is, this is, this belong, like I, I belong in this practice. Like this practice is definitely for me, but I refuse to like really follow suit with the deep dogma that it carries, uh, because you know, any practice, there's still dogmas that you have. And it's just with me, like take what you need and leave the rest. Like I, I, I like to explore around and, Um, I like to take what works for me and, you know, there's other yogas that I'm really enjoying too. Like right now I've been doing a lot of aerial, which isn't as spiritual, but it's allowing me to connect with my body more and it's allowing me to feel like connect to my divine feminine energy because it's when I'm in this silk, I'm, I'm feeling supported and I can let go and being this Gemini mind of like super analytical and logical I really have been hearing the call to let go and surrender. And so aerial yoga has been really helping me tap into my divine and feminine energy. And it's allowing me to be free and flowing. But, you know, I've been working on getting my, my niche a little more clear and to be clear as to how I can serve. And, you know, when I had my really difficult LSD experience five years ago, what came up for me was all of my shadow, all of my shadows. And it's interesting because I'm, you know, I'm doing a lot of reading and research right now to prepare me for um, this webinar I'm hosting and I'll have it in the show notes. Um, I'm hosting a webinar on the, on Wednesday, the 15th. And it's about embracing Kundalini yoga, and it's talking about the science of the techno of the technology for the spiritual science of the technology of the Aquarian age. And so, essentially, what I'm you know I've been reading a lot and diving deeper into the science behind Kundalini yoga. Um, and what's really interesting is I've been as I've been reading and as I've been diving in deep. I'm recognizing, wow, like I intuitively knew with my life, this is what I needed to do because I do feel like when I did LSD, I had a Kundalini awakening and, um, I wasn't prepared for it. And what came through was like, again, all of my shadow stuff that really needed to be worked out. And for me, it wasn't easy you know, like when you when you go through these things, I really what that experience taught me and what that experience showed me is where in my life I need to master my own life. 
And for me to master my own life, I need to be able to embrace my pain body. And to embrace my pain body is to honor my shadows and to honor the darkness so that I can really allow myself to be in a more neutral space um, with my past. And that's why I've been so big about honor the journey, trust the process, because we need to honor where we came from, you know, and for me, like, I feel like I relate to people who have either had difficult, um, difficult trips, or I can relate to people who have had, who are on the spiritual path. Um, but yeah, I don't like to see myself as one extreme or the other. Like I see myself as very, I'm all about like the moderation right now and being moderate. And I think that's also me being a Gemini is that I can really allow myself to go and be really mutable and adaptable to, to the situation that I'm around. And I like to see both sides of the spectrum and make my own choice and pave my own road and to think for myself. And that's, I really want to encourage people to start thinking for themselves because we, when we think for ourselves, it's when we're tapping into our heart. And we need to lead with our heart because there's a reason why we're here. And it is to be in that space from our hearts. And we can't let the people or our teachers or anything outside of us dictate who we are. And that was a huge struggle I was experiencing, um, you know, between these past five years. And again, with this Venus um, retrograde, I'm really diving in deep to like my work the past five years. Um, That's what's been really coming up for me. And during that time, you know, like I was really afraid to shine my light and it was really hard for me to get out there because I carried so much shame that I didn't look like my teachers before me because I still really believed and I was still extremely passionate about psychedelics. But I was like, oh, my gosh, like so and so is like, you know, recovering AA alcoholic like person and so that means I need to be like that too and then but it was never resonating and because I didn't like yeah I definitely was abusing like I said MDMA but I haven't touched that in five years um and the other parts of me like I haven't touched LSD since that difficult trip and again psilocybin has been really helpful for me and I also feel part of me is part of that reincarnation of the godmother of psilocybin because her name was Maria Sabina and I'm Sabrina Maria so I was just like I felt very connected to this this uh beautiful shaman from Mexico who was using these medicines and working with Albert Hoffman who serendipitously made and created LSD um to help and understand like how these medicines can help heal And I do believe, you know, I was telling my friend's mom at um, my friend's bridal shower last weekend, I believe the huge part of why our country is sick is because our vets are sick. And so I believe that, like, we can use these medicines to help with our vets, you know. And the thing is, is that, yes, yoga is great. But the thing that and I well, maybe white Tantra for sure. But white Tantra yoga will allow you to really cut through and like do years and years of deep healing. But we're not doing white Tantra all the time. And psilocybin, for instance, will help with doing like years of therapy in one session if it's done with if it's done in the right setting. And if it's done with a psychiatrist or someone to really help you get through that. And to me, it's like I couldn't I didn't want to allow myself to carry that shame that that was my past and that's what I believe in still to this day and it's I'm a huge ally for it and I still am very passionate about these medicines and how it works and I played small trying to shut my down shut myself down from it and people around me were so upset with me because they knew that like this isn't who you are Sabrina you know what you believe in but I was too afraid to own my past and I was too afraid because of what my teachers or what society or what my government have told me what's right and what's wrong and so with me I was giving away my power for so long and you know this is the sovereign goddess podcast like I am here to choose my own experience on how I feel things and I'm not going to allow anyone else anymore to dictate my life or tell me what I've done right or what I've done wrong if I'm leading with my heart and I'm staying true to myself then that is what is in my heart I know when I make mistakes and I'm aware of it and I apologize now especially if someone calls me out for it and I know deep down I I screwed up 
I take responsibility for it and I own it because them even coming up to me or me making that mistake is me allowing myself to grow. And we we need to make mistakes in order to grow because it means, you know, we're trying things even if we fail, especially if we fail. If we failed, we tried, you know, at least we had the courage to try. And as I'm stepping more into my role as the spirit teacher that I am and to creation to serve me just by simply being me, me being me is me being honest about my beliefs with psychedelics and me being able to speak up and speak my truth about my history with them and how I wish to continue to support groups and organizations like MAPS and the Zendo to help people because we cannot have this abstinence talk about these medicines because it's not going to work. And I feel we need to get to this point. My goal, my real goal You know, I'm in this, like, I'm in a very conscious, I'm in a conscious community of people who enjoy to party, and a lot of people will use these medicines, but my goal is that if they are going to use it, may it be in ceremony and for a purpose, and ideally, I would like to help them gear, stay, get off of them, like, not, it really hurts me when I'm going to these events and people feel like, in order to enjoy themselves, they have to be on something, and I've been there for sure. But like I said, the past um, the past few festivals, like it started with Bur- like Burning Man. Again, I was completely sober when I went to Envision, completely sober. So I'm like I'm getting to the space now where I'm enjoying like going to these events sober because I can tap into it. I'm picking up on the good vibes and all the love around me. And it's allowing me and I've been there before. I've been in that headspace before. But I feel like I'm on these substances if I want to be and I don't even need to be consuming them because I'm tapping into that those spaces and that state of euphoria. But the biggest thing that I want to be doing as a spiritual teacher is to not be shaming someone else because of where they've been or what they believe in. And that's the thing about Kundalini Yoga. It's like Kundalini Yoga, the whole thing about Kundalini Yoga is that it's a technology. It's not a religion. And you can use the technology to support your other religions. Like just be, if you're a Buddhist, you can use Kundalini Yoga. If you're a Muslim, you can use Kundalini Yoga. If you're a Christian, you can still use Kundalini Yoga because it's the science and the technology that's behind what Yogi, what Yogi Bhajan brought. That is helping us really navigate through these times and space. And yes, like I understand sometimes when we're doing these uh, psychedelics or whatever, it is affecting, you know, our nervous system and it is affecting all these things. But I do believe in moderation and I do believe that, you know, we have the choice to like we need to be responsible for ourselves and for our bodies. And to do that, it's like to really honor your sacred vessel. And again, My use of psychedelics allowed me to dive in deep and heal these wounds and to help me be the person I am today. And so essentially, like I'm working on tapping into my unlimited potential with Kundalini Yoga. Yes, but more so is for me to master my pain body because the Kundalini Yoga, the Kundalini energy, excuse me, is that Shakti creative energy that's stored at the base of our of our spine. And then it coils up. And as it goes, it allows us to block through, to cut through all the blocks that may be stuck within our bodies and to radiate out our truth and connect to the divinity and to our divinity. And so we have to understand that, like, we have blocks, we're human. And there's sometimes, you know, like, we need to be able to manage and be responsible for our actions, too. So... There's times where, you know, like I was having stuff come up. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, sacral inner child work and me allowing myself to microdose with psilocybin where I would eat like very, very little. It allowed me to tap into the inner child and to heal. And I would chant mantra. I would bless. I would bless the medicine in front of me and my intention everything is based on intention if my pro- the problem is when i had that difficult lsd trip i consumed the lsd out of spite i was so pissed off and i was really angry and like no sleep i was just not in the right mind space not in the right setting and i consumed it and because i went in without the right intention 
it rocked my socks. And I literally, like, it was the most difficult, one of the most difficult experiences of my life. And at the same time, when I look back at it, I'm so grateful because it woke me up. That experience really told me and really showed me the things and the areas in my life that I needed to heal. I knew I needed to heal relationships with my family. I knew I needed to heal my relationships with Mother Gaia, with my soul, with my sensuality, with my inner child, with my friends, with my work. All of that shit came up at the surface for me during that really difficult trip. The problem was, was that it not until like maybe three hours into my really difficult trip that I had a friend sit with me and that friend just sat with me and that was like all I needed before that I had friends coming up who have never done LSD and were just like shut up she's tripping on acid and it was just like ugh, bitches like god that was not the support that I really needed at that time And I'm really excited to announce that in the next uh, few weeks on the podcast, I'm going to have one of the direct, the director of maps. I'm going to talk to her and we're going to talk a little more about psychedelic harm reduction because it is festival season and my, I'm here to really help you if you do choose. I'm not, you know, again, I'm not here to say like, go do it. But again, I'm not going to deny that it can be happening. So if you do choose to do these medicines, that you do choose to do them safely and to support and to be able to help out and look out for one another just in case, you know, because there's a lot of shit going on in the world right now. And that is a pure correlation to our inner world. And so a lot of people are healing on really deep levels right now. Um, The collective is healing on really deep levels right now. And so we need to allow ourselves to support one another and realize that there is no separation. We're all in this together. And I really just want to advocate looking out in community and having safe practices. But um, yeah, so when I a little now going back on what happened with the aftermath after my uh, my difficult LSD experience. So essentially like. I was also like this very deep, like skinny love kind of feel that I was going through. Um, It was the five year anniversary of like my best friend's passing. It was like being in this space where like I just graduated from college and I didn't know what I was doing with my life. Like, again, I was just like abusing Molly every weekend or at least once a month. Um, I just was going down a really dark path. And I needed to get a wake up call that whole summer. I was being rebellious and I was like, whoa, I can see what my power is doing, what I'm capable of achieving. But my problem was I was leading out of spite and anger and not from pure pureness. I was deep down. I still was focused on love, but like I was like, oh, fuck the system. That was kind of my mentality. And then after that summer, like three weeks later, I got struck by lightning. And that lightning was just like the universe being like, bitch, you need to re you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. So then I was living in San Diego. It was in the middle of the election season. I was always alone. Um, I hermited and really took a sabbatical for like three years after I was trying to like rectify my business with peace, love, but like. Being in the party scene all the time was, like, not healthy for me. And, you know, I was just trying and trying, and it wasn't working anymore. Um, So then I hit my rock bottom. I moved back home. Had my first experience at the Integatron, where I did, like, my first, like, true sound bath there. And I was like, okay, like, now it's time for me to, like, take back my life. So I stopped drinking. I like didn't smoke weed anymore. Um, I definitely wasn't doing, um, MDMA anymore. And, uh, I just, you know, was just really like diving deep in self-help books and working a lot on, uh, trying to find a miracle. (laughs) And, um, I hermited myself because I felt so ashamed. I felt so ashamed. I felt like, I disappointed the whole world, and um, that wasn't a good feeling at all. 
So because I was so like disappointed with myself, I was just like, I'm just going to act like I'm not here. So I hid. I hid for four years. I was on a sabbatical for three. And uh, during that time, you know, like I, uh, I went to tra- I went to Thailand. I became a certified life coach and a business coach and life purpose coach. Um, I went to Bali and then I slowly was like getting my groove back. And, um, when I was in Thailand was on my 24th birthday and that's when I started diving into A Course in Miracles and A Course in Miracles, like I'm still reading it every single day. And that book really allowed me to help me shift my perception from fear to love. And when we talk about guru in kundalini yoga, we're not talking about this one person you idolize. Guru rep- represents and means from darkness to light. So it's literally from fear to love is the guru. Like, and you find that guru within you. And so that's why my website is shamanasagadesa.guru because it's like I want you to find that guru within you. And that guru is like, where can you find, where can you go to the deepest part of your soul, that darkest part of your soul, and allow yourself to enter into the light? I dare you to do that. I challenge you to do that. I want you to experience that because that's where the growth happens. And you allowing yourself to surrender and honor those dark parts and honor your shadows, that's where the healing comes in and that's where the empathy comes in once you are gone through it and you can help someone else. So I became a student of A Course in Miracles. I did it for 365 days. My 365th day was my 25th birthday. And that's when I took I took my first Kundalini Yoga class. And I actually took Kundalini Yoga or I, si- I signed up for my Kundalini Yoga teacher training without ever taking a Kundalini Yoga class because I just knew that this was this was the technology I needed to do. And so I was in Encinitas and at the at the Soul of Yoga, which is where I still teach. Um, and I did my teacher training there. And uh, that really like catapult me in a way. And during the middle of my 40 day sauna, so your 40 day practice of my teacher training, I went to my first Burning Man. (laughs) And during that time, it was really hard for me because I felt myself growing, but there were still things that I knew I needed to work on that I was faced with. And I was just like, oh my gosh, still more work. And so I came back from Burning Man, and I, I learned a lot from that experience, and then I became, I got my yoga teacher training certification and around Halloween time, and I was moving back to San Diego to start teaching, and then I was in San Diego, and I was really healing myself, um, but yeah, during that time, I, I, I while I was in Thailand, for I should go back a little, when I was in Thailand... I did psilocybin for the first time, but I took too much. And again, it wasn't the right space. And I had a really difficult psilocybin trip. And then I didn't touch it for a year. And then when I touched it again, it was like very healing and therapeutic for me. And I started feeling things like I started feeling myself healing again. And uh, so, yeah, when I came back from Thailand, I was living in San Diego and doing the whole thing in San Diego was great. Um, But then my grandmother was starting to get sick and to do the back and forth to San Diego to Palm Springs. It was just like so tolling. And I went to John of God during that time. And when I went to John of God in Brazil, you know, they ask you like, what is it that you want to have with your healing? And, uh, during that time I was also like still sober, like I wasn't doing anything. And, uh, for me, I went to, when I went to John of God, it was like, how can I best serve? How can I balance my masculine and feminine energies? How can I heal relationships? Allow me to help me heal and release all my grievances and to help me conquer my, the paranoia and the PTSD I was experiencing. And during that time at John of God, there was a vet there. And he was a veteran. He was in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he just instantly gravitated towards me and I'm in the middle of my own healing and I'm just like whoa this is too much and uh it was I think like that was one of the major seeds that really was planted in me to be aware and take care of the vets (laughs) and to recognize how much help they really needed so um when I came back from Brazil from John of God and had another like gnarly like 
rebirth there. And uh, when I came back, I, you know, I, I taught at Desert Hearts uh, for the first time in out here in California, which is a yoga. It's a well, I, I part of the yoga, but it's a it's a music festival. And uh, I'm really excited that I'm helping host uh, the Red Tent this year. So we're hosting a Red Tent to help create a safe healing space for the women if they need to come in. And I'm there to help be a medicine woman and help whatever arises for them and help them get through that um, in the next coming weeks. And um, so, yeah, I went to I went to Desert Hearts and, you know, that was when I got the download that I needed to create Shamanic Dream. And but at the same time, I was trying to process Sean of God and process like the starting of the grieving phase of my grandmother. And uh, three weeks after Desert Hearts, I moved back home to be her caretaker. And uh, during that time, I would like microdose here and there just to like allow myself to heal and witness and recognize my ancestral karma and, you know, this passing of the crone, you know, to to the maiden and uh it was just like my grandmother was passing it was my mom's mom so she was carrying me obviously when she was in her mother's wounds and uh womb and the whole thing was like recognizing her patterns and recognizing my mother's patterns and what I needed to cut and break and be liberated to do my own thing and so um when she passed she pa- I sold my ticket to Burning Man to my friend, and six hours later, she passed. And, uh, yeah, so during that time, you know, I uh, once my grandma was passing, I was microdosing here or there again just to allow myself to heal and to continue grieving in a way. Um, but then I got to the point where I didn't need it anymore. And I was doing a lot of my yoga. You know, my yoga really helped me get through it. And... Um, there was, there's no, sh- there's no shame about doing what I was doing. But before that, I carried a lot of shame about my past. And I carried a lot of shame about speaking up about using psychedelics that, you know, I would tell people like, I don't want our relationship to be based on this anymore. And I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to be around it just because like I carried so much shame and I was like, I just, there's all this like fear around it. Even though in my heart I still like believed it and the the healing properties, and uh, so yeah, so I you know I I didn't I touched it but not really, and then when I went back to Burning Man, um, this past year, I decided well I heard the call actually, and I can testify with my friend Shane like we were driving to Burning Man in the middle of the night and this like freaking blue orb like flew over the car. And I said, did you say that? And Shane goes, I was watching it the whole time, but I didn't want to say anything because I wanted to make sure that you saw it too. And that blue represents Archangel Michael. And Archangel Michael is telling me, like, you don't need it. You don't need this medicine to help you to enjoy yourself and to do the work that you need to do at Burning Man. So on my drive to Burning Man, I decided I was going to do it sober. And doing Burning Man sober... It wasn't even challenging for me, oddly enough. I thought it was going to be really hard for me because obviously I'd be around it a lot. But if anything, it was so empowering and my guides were helping me and supporting me. And during that time, I had a really strong sauna practice. And uh, I was teaching Kundalini Yoga at Burning Man. And I felt good. Like this was like right after my first gallstone flush and I was feeling good. It was like, wow, this is the first time in my life I'm taking care of myself And, um, but I still was playing small. I was still playing small. And I had one instance, like during the man burn, where I had that little like flash of PTSD. And um, it like wigged me out a little bit. But I, you know, I've been getting through it and I'm becoming stronger with it. And I'm so happy that I'm able to recognize it and just see it as an opportunity for me to love more, love myself more. And so during that time, you know, I came back from Burning Man and then I taught at Bhakti Fest. And it was really hard for me to connect with the people at Bhakti Fest um, just because it was just like, I don't know, I felt like there wasn't that sense of community that I was feeling at Burning Man. And with Burning Man, like there was such a balance between spirituality and, you know, these psychedelics. And to me, like when I went to Bhakti, yeah, it's a sober place and things like that. But 
it so wasn't resonating with me. Like I was like, I don't feel like this is like really like my community. And to me, like I was again, I was completely sober at Burning Man and I felt more comfortable being around people that weren't necessarily sober than I was being around all these like sober people. So I was like really working through a lot of that kind of like identity crisis during that time. And, uh, and then, so when I came back home, um, after Burning Man, I just, you know, allowed myself to really process and to understand. And, you know, I was like, I was the medicine woman of my camp and I was sober for nine days. And, you know, a lot of people were just like, oh my God, how are you doing it? And in all reality, like if people around me were on certain substances or certain medicines, like I could feel it. And I like do my best shamanism on the dance floor. I've known that for like the past like five, six years. And uh, that first began when I went to like my first rave back in 2012, 2011, 2010, 2010. And, uh, but I really saw that in 2011. And I, that like the movement, the movement was what really inspired me to do peace, love and what was going on on those dance floors and seeing that use that connection and community and people coming together from all these different creeds and backgrounds and sexual orientations and places and all these different diverse like settings, I guess you can say that to me was like, wow, there's something real behind what's going on. And when the media was loving to bash it, you know, and bash the movement and, bash what it was about like I I feel that that anger and that sadness and to create something to bring more of an awareness of what's really happening because I do believe um that scene really saved my life in a way too and uh, that was where I felt connection and um community and I it was the first time I really felt like I saw God and like connected to God um after years of repression and depression and uh suicidal like thoughts and all this pain and you know during that time even the past five years I had to really I was like denying and like really ashamed of my past with peace love and then I was like you know what this isn't right something's not working here and so I had to allow myself to just like be present and to allow myself to honor where I've come and still stay true and reign and believe in what I believed in. So for me, that was something I really, I needed to make peace with my past and to still stand up and still be an advocate and an ally for the community. Because I know like a lot of the community, they're not really allowed to like speak about these medicines because they'll lose liability um, insurance liabilities because there have been many deaths about like overdoses and things like that. But I think that's why it's so important to have the proper education and to have, you know, like, let's be real and let's talk about it and see that like, if people are over abusing these substances, it's because they're like, and I keep seeing it over and over again. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. And a lot of these people are abusing these substances or abusing these medicines because they are yearning for connection. So I'm here to help people find that connection again. And I'm not going to carry shame and I'm not going to, you know, like bash someone if they do decide to take some medicines. But I'm also here to help them realize that they can get to those spaces without those medicines as well. Um, and that's something I would love to see more. You know, it's festival seasons coming around and I would love to see more people not abusing <laughs> these medicines just because they feel like they need to and in order to enjoy themselves because then they're giving away their power to something outside of them. And... That's something that I'm really passionate about helping people realize is that like you are enough as you are and you can totally get yourself to those spaces if you allow yourself to. But allowing yourself means you are also believing that you can. <laughs> and, you know, I have had even friends tell me like since I've been back from Envision, like, wow, how did you do it sober? And to me, it was it wasn't even it was like a no brainer. It was so easy for me because 
I'm, I go to those spaces because that's my home. I go to those spaces because that's my community. And so I feel connected when I'm there and I don't need to be taking a substance to feel that connection to everyone else. And yes, like I will admit, like they're having great connections that I've made at some of these um, events that I have decided to partake in some medicines. But to me, like I want every time I go to these festivals, I leave and I'm like, wow, this is I'm I'm working on co-creating this to be my reality. Like it bugs the shit out of me when everyone's like, oh, back to reality. And it's like, no, like we created this. This is like still part of our reality. And so for me, like, I want to find that neutrality and like find that balance so that what we experience at these festivals can really be related and can be displayed in our everyday lives if we allow ourselves to. But in order for us to be able to have that kind of environment into our daily lives, we can't be like fucked up all the time. We have to allow ourselves to be like, neutral to it and be like this is what it is and like just because I'm on these substances isn't that's not the reason why I'm enjoying myself I'm enjoying myself because I'm around beautiful people and I'm around beautiful music and beautiful intentions and purity and the purity is coming from our hearts like what is our hearts what do our hearts want and so to me like I'm just here to really help bridge that gap between these two these two worlds you know what I mean and that's why I'm so passionate about teaching uh, Kundalini Yoga at festivals because I love when people come come out of my class and they like are crying to me and being like, I just went somewhere. And to me, that's like the best feeling in the world, knowing that they had the experience they needed to have through breath and through mudras and through sacred geometry and through chanting and mantras And them just allowing themselves to be, they were able to get there. And that to me is like the best feeling in the world. And so again, like I'm I'm really enjoying like going to these festivals and these events sober because I'm able to navigate through it and just like be strong without it. Like I don't need them anymore at these places because I'm already providing, I'm providing by teaching. And when I'm there and I'm teaching, like, it's the best gift in the world that I can give to myself and give to other peoples and give to God. It's like, I'm here to be a conduit for the divine and to help, like, help these people that are coming in that are sitting in front of me, my brothers and sisters, and help them recognize their own divinity and awaken to their own divinity. And that's what Kundalini is. Kundalini is about helping get a Kundalini awakening. And to get that Kundalini awakening is allowing ourselves to awaken to our fullest, highest truest potential with grace and we do that when we allow ourselves to honor all facets of the human experience we allow ourselves to honor our minds honor our bodies and honor our souls that is what this is about and that's something i've been so passionate about and it's something i'm here to continue to share and so yes psychedelics saved my life yes yoga saved my life yes traveling saved my life the things that i have done in my life have helped save my life from one of the darkest pit of my life, straight up. Like I can't, I'm, I'm choosing to not allow myself to deny where I've been to where I'm going. And I want to help people, you know, to get to that space. Like I said, I want to help people get to that space where they don't feel like they need to be taking these substances in order to get there. And, but there's some people that are so far down that if they can use psychiatric help to help heal, like I'm talking about these vets particularly, why not help our brothers and sisters in that way? And I just feel like much of the yoga community, they don't understand the movement or they don't understand some people's choices and that's okay. But we need to come from a space where we're releasing shame towards our brothers and sisters. We cannot be shaming someone because of their choices. If anything, we can just hold space for them, for them to be able to recognize and understand what is true for them because we have to allow ourselves to honor every one per every single person we have to honor where they are in their journey because this is not our journey it's not our it's not our responsibility our choice and it's not up to us to like say like you're doing this wrong you're doing this wrong all we can do is help help one another return home and that home is coming and living and speaking your truth that is finding that bliss when you are speaking and living your truth in alignment, that is heaven on earth. 
That is moksha. We need to allow ourselves to liberate from the dogma of others, of our peers, not just religions, but the dogma of our peers, of our parents, of our friends, of our own ego. And we have to allow ourselves to be more heart-centered with our choices and towards others. And so, yes, yoga community, like, yes, psychedelics saved my life, and I will be an advocate for psychedelics for the rest of my life. And I love helping people process and understand, like, going through what has a, what has come up to the surface, what's, a, what's ro- risen up for them after their experiences. Like, I love to help people, like, process and go through it because in all reality I never want to see someone do what I did I never want to see someone alienate themselves from their friends and their loved ones and their life for three years being a hermit just because they were afraid and ashamed of what they did it's the worst feeling in the world when you are beating yourself up for something that you did and we have to work on forgiving ourselves and forgiving others who have tried to shame us or things or other people, things outside of us that are trying to tell us that what we did was wrong. We need to just allow ourselves to connect with our soul, connect with, with God, with spirit, with the universe, with the divine mother, whatever, your higher power. We need to allow ourselves to have and build a solid relate and, and flowing relationship with the divine because no one will be able to understand what we've experienced and so that means we cannot shame other people for what they've done. We can't. We have to allow ourselves to come from a space of empathy for these people. And if people are abusing substances, like, we have to hold space for them to realize and to wake up like, whoa, this is not good for me. Because like I said, I've been there. <laughs> and it wasn't helping when other people were shaming me when I was already beating myself up for, you know, what I did. So we need to, again, work on releasing that shame, releasing that judgment, recognizing the other person is you, and to honor people for where they are because everyone's doing the best that they can based on their level of awareness. That quote from Deepak Chopra was the, the quote that has resonated with me since my difficult LSD experience. The first book I read after my really challenging trip was Spiritual Solutions by Deepak Chopra. And that quote has resonated and has reigned true to me for the past five years and it will probably stick with me for the rest of my life. But again, during those five years, I did deep study and research about psychedelics because I was trying to self-heal myself. I needed to heal myself by having deep self-study and understanding the scientific breakdowns of freaking mad scientists to me. I love to understand and like break down how all this works. So, yeah, we have to, I like, I, again, I've done the deep study of psychedelics. I've seen how it's affected other people in a positive way and a negative way. So I'm able to be able to be mutable to both situations and help people see both sides of the spectrum. With yoga, I've seen how it's helped me with my life, but I also see how some people, like, they are so obsessed with it. And we have to, this isn't, we're not supposed to be obsessing over things. Like, we're supposed to be able to allow things to flow And we need to allow ourselves to like everything in moderation because some people take it to such an extreme and it's not just yoga. It can be anything when we take anything to such an extreme and we're not like aware of what else is going on, then it's really hard for us to connect with other people. We need to be able to listen to both sides of the story. We need to be able to allow ourselves to be open to listen to what other people have to say and not just be so closed minded. Like, That's what I love about psychedelics is that it helps us open our minds. And more than ever, we need to be awake and we need to be aware because they're not going anywhere. Like they're going to be here and they're here to help us. And like they've always been here to help us. But the problem in the past, like we have to understand and look at history is that people were abusing them and they weren't using them for the right purposes. But they've had deep healing work on millions and millions and millions of people And as we become, like, there's a reason why millennials were able to, like, reconnect. Like, there's a reason why we reconnected as psychedelics again, like they did 50 years ago. Like, there's no, there's no such thing as coincidence. Like, it's all a synchronicity. But now we have research. We have experience um, from past, from the past. And we can look at it from a different perspective and be like, whoa, these are the mistakes that they did back in the 60s and the 70s. And to mention, 
Yogi Bhajan brought Kundalini Yoga to the West to help the hippies. So I want to help honor that legacy and to help these hippies, but I'm not going to shame them if they're doing psychedelics. And that's what I realized my first Burning Man. I was like taking a Kundalini Yoga class, my first Burning Man in 2014, and I was talking to this guy and I was like, you know, like it's really hard for me because I believe in these medicines. I've done the research. I'm seeing how they're helping. I'm reading up on science. And this guy was like, you can't allow someone to dictate how you feel. And during that time in the 60s, there was not nearly as much science and research and papers as there are now about psychedelics. So things are changing and things are getting cleaner (laughs) and there is a different intention to them. And right now, like whatever you need to help heal yourself, if it's helping you, who am I to judge? This is your journey. This isn't about me. All I can do is be a teacher and teach you what helped me. But I just really, my prayer is that as a society, we start to learn to take what we need and leave the rest. And we don't get trapped in these thought patterns from one person because then we're not thinking for ourselves. And that's so part of that Piscean way is that we would just idolize one person. But we need to work on empowering ourselves and reclaiming our sovereignty by us choosing this is resonating with me, so I'm going to run with this. And this isn't resonating with me. I thank you, information, for coming, but I'm going to take what I need and I'm going to leave you behind because we are in an information overload society right now. Like We have so much information. We have the whole world in our pocket. And so we need to really allow ourselves to be selective as what what resonates with us and what and and run with it and make make the world better with based off what we know and what we believe and what reigns true to us. And you can't allow anyone else to tell you otherwise. You can learn and they can teach you about the science or what's breaking down with it. That's great. But this is your experience. If Kundalini Yoga taught me anything, it's all about your experience. And you can have all the knowledge that you want, but until you experience it, that's where the wisdom really comes. You can, we can all just blurt out a whole bunch of knowledge, but that's not what it's about. We have to allow ourselves to experience because when the experience comes, then we're speaking with integrity. And when that experience comes, we're speaking with truth and we're speaking with compassion and empathy and integrity. And we need to become a more, we need to allow ourselves to be more driven by integrity and authenticity. And so, yeah, so me being able to speak up right now and talk about this, I was ashamed for five years up until now. I was so afraid and I hid in the closet about it because I was just like, oh, who am I? Who am I? But now here I am. My name's Sabrina Riccio. I'm a Kundalini yoga teacher and I'm also a psychonaut. And so I believe in psychedelics. I believe in yoga. I believe in breath work. I believe in spirit guides. I believe in the goodness of people and their heart. And I believe that everyone is doing the best that they can. So with that being said, thank you for allowing me to speak up and to be vulnerable and to be real and authentic. And if you feel like, you know, you want to connect with me, I'm here for you. You can easily check um, the SovereignGoddessPodcast.com. Um, excuse me, SovereignGoddessPodcast.com. No, the. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Shamanessa Godessa, but I'm just here to tell you, like, I refuse to be silent. I'm not going to be quiet anymore about psychedelics. I'm sorry, I can't anymore because I'm literally it's time for me to speak my truth and to be honest and I want to help bridge and birth this new paradigm because I believe in the future of these medicines and how they're really going to help people and I want to just see my brothers and sisters happy and healthy and holy and they can do that in whatever way works for them because we're all just here to help guide each other home so if you liked this episode I encourage you to subscribe You can uh, leave us a review here and uh, share with your friends. I'm really enjoying doing these podcasts and um, I'm really excited once I get back in April. um, There's going to be more guests again. I've just been trying to catch up and uh, there's a lot that I've wanted to say that I really wanted to share with you all. 
So thank you for joining me today. Happy full moon and release what no longer serves and allow all the new and all the beauty to come in and just love yourself because that's what this Venus retrograde for me has been about. It's just been loving myself and being true and honest and I'm not going to be, I choose to not allow myself to hide anymore and I choose to like stand up in my truth because I feel empowered and liberated for speaking up and saying what's really on my heart. And so if it does, if it, you know, if some people are upset about it, sorry, but I'm not sorry because this is me. <laughs> so um, if we resonate with me, awesome. And I'm really excited to continue to collaborate with like-minded souls and I'm really excited to see what the future holds as we continue to more step more into our authentic truth and to allow ourselves to be more vulnerable and real and bold and brave and courageous enough to speak what really is on our hearts. So sending you so much love. Um, last, and lastly, if you want to learn more about Kundalini Yoga, I am hosting a free webinar. Um, it's called Embracing Kundalini Yoga, the Spiritual Technology of the Aquarian Age. And I'm just going to be talking a little more about the technology of what we're doing and a little bit about Kundalini Yoga and uh, what is Kundalini Energy, what's the Aquarian Age, and also giving you some tips to uh, allow yourself to just have these like pocketbook meditations for you to do. But uh, thank you for joining me, and I love you, and I'll be chatting with you soon. Take care, Satnam.